Okay, fellas, meet the most expensive woman in Africa. Yeah, yeah, the most expensive woman in Africa. Absolutely. So when I say expensive, I mean somebody paid a dowry for this girl. Like uh, probably in your country, you call it bride price or the nobola. One million dollars and 500 cows. The most expensive dowry or expensive woman in Africa. A family just got paid one million dollar with 500 cows. 500 cows and a million dollar. Bravo. Clap the neck. Okay, this is absolutely crazy. Absolutely insane. Her name is Atiak Dawuriak, 19 years old. Seven feet tall. That's about two meters, 13 centimeters. She's a giant. Look at the skin color. Melanin, pure melanin. You and me are liars. This is real melanin right here. This is Africa at the deepest level. Look at that. Look at them legs. Like a gazelle. Look, she looks like a giraffe and a gazelle put together. Now, with the black skin, unbelievable like silk. Oh my God, look at that girl. One million dollars, that's what she deserves. Seven foot, f oh God, I'm losing my word. Two meters, 13 centimeter. Okay, so in Africa generally, you don't just get a girl and go stay with her. Say, oh, this is my girl, we stay together. None of that, none of that. You need to go to the family and do things appropriately. It means you pay the dowry. So we have this movement where you have to go to the family's, you know, the woman's family. As a token of respect and consideration, you pay what they ask you to pay before you take your woman. There's no, oh, my girlfriend and I stay together. Nah, there's none of that. N none of that. If they have a father, you will not take that girl and go stay with her. Absolutely not. Well, you, you find in South, some pouches here and there where boys and girls stay together, you know, boyfriend and girlfriend. But usually those families, there's no fathers. There's no father in that family. There's no male figure like that. Or maybe she is the breadwinner. And what's a breadwinner? Breadwinner is, uh, you know, she, she, she makes the salary. She makes the most money in the family. And everybody looks up to her. So she calls the shot. In that case, maybe nobody's going to tell her anything. Then she can go to the boyfriend's house and stay for days. But if there is a father figure or a brother or somebody like that, I'm telling you, there's no way you go. Yeah, she's probably going to sleep at your house for one day or two. Two max. After that, she has to return home. So in Africa, in most Africa at least, that encourages men to get married. Because you can't get a woman at a, your house every single day to do truth, 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 truth. You know, truth, truth, too much truth, truth. The reason why many men don't want to marry. Because you're already giving them everything for free. You go to his house, you wash the dishes, you clean the floor, you do the... Oh my God, and you cloof, cloof every position. I mean, the guy, <laughs> then the guy is another option because there's another lady willing to do the same. When do you think that guy's going to ever get married? He's not getting married. He's going to waste your time. Now, in some places of Africa, women don't do that. If you want that type of treatment, then you know what to do. There's no me being pregnant of you. There's no baby daddies. I'm sorry. It's a disgrace to the family. In some places, baby daddy or, oh, she had a child. No. In some majority of Africa, they hate it when a woman comes home with a pregnancy from a father who nobody knows. Therefore, that encourages many men to do the right thing. Now, when a man spends money on you before marrying you, there's many chances that it's going to be serious with you. Because men don't spend money on things they don't necessarily like. When a man takes you for free, he's probably going to play with you because you didn't cost him a thing. You need to have sleepless nights thinking about how he's going to get the money together, how he's going to bring family together. You need to have sleepless nights and have respect for who you are. By the time you are in his house, he knows how to respect you. That's how it works in most African nations. Now, let's go back to the story of this girl. Atiat Dao Riak, 19 years old, beautiful, 7 feet tall. And she's a virgin. Yeah, never known man. Never known any man. So she's a valuable human being. And the reason why many men will fight for her. So apparently, the first, a family went online um, in the Dinka tribe in South Sudan. They will advertise their daughter. Say, okay, our daughter? Yeah, she's ready. She's 19 years old. She's beautiful, seven foot tall. She's intelligent. She's serviable. She's agreeable. She's an amazing woman. She's ready. Who's ready? So you need to come forward along other competitors for the family to evaluate you and see who's got the best criteria for their child. 
So they don't just give their child to anybody. They need to make sure you've got all the tools that the family need to ensure that the child has a good life and a good husband. So the first man that came along offered 105 cows and 65 million Sudanese pounds. That's about $20,000. So 105 cows plus $20,000. The second man came and he offered 350 cows, including a V6 Toyota. That's a big engine car. Room, room, room for the Dinka gazelle. Look at her. She's like a gazelle mixed with a giraffe with black skin. Unbelievable. So they offered 350 cows plus a V6 Toyota and a four-bedroom house, fella. Four-bedroom house. I mean, <laughs> competition was quite hot. And amazing. You know, just think about it. From nothing to 350 cows, V8 engine, and a four-bedroom house. Now, the third man, who's a young man, 33 years old, apparently, came along. I'm not sure if that's accurate, but yeah, he came along and brought 500 cows and a million US dollars for this young woman. Doesn't she deserve it? She's tall. She's virgin. She's black. She's real black. Like black, black. More black than me. Actually, like my jeans. You know, she, she's just melanin, real pure melanin. Amazing, you know? And uh, yeah, so it's made a lot of noise and people are very, very astounded by this sight. And yeah, she got married. Uh, apparently the third guy was selected and she was married. And some people say she doesn't look very happy on the picture of a marriage. She doesn't, it could be anything. Maybe she's not happy, okay? Number one, maybe something happened during the wedding celebration and that made her unhappy frustrated maybe you know or you never know or maybe she really is, is not happy uh, but guess what in africa some aunties say this i remember hearing this long time ago this is sometimes you marry somebody that you don't necessarily like i mean they were talking about what they did in the past because in the past they will bring a man and a woman who don't necessarily know each other or they've known each other from afar and get them to marry because the families know each other and not today you call it arranged marriages but arranged marriage has worked really, really well for many people and for many years. So some of these aunties will say, you get to learn to love somebody as time goes. Just like you get to hate somebody as time goes. You, yeah, because there's a lot of people you really, really loved in the beginning, right? They look like the best thing ever. What happened next? You're not together anymore. Because you happen to be what? A narcissistic prick. Not a nice person. So it's a reverse. Sometimes you start loving somebody too much, then you don't love them. Sometimes you don't really love somebody and you love them. Who's the winner? It's the person that keeps his marriage. That's the winner. Yeah, so sometimes you meet a person you don't necessarily found of immediately, but with time you learn to love them. I'm sure you've done that. I mean, a lot of you ladies here, uh, you, you, you've dated somebody very ugly. Uh, you don't remember that. Look, look among your exes. There are people that are very ugly. Maybe you don't see it. Guess why you don't see it? Because you got used to them. You know, as time went along, he treated you nice, bought you present, was very cool with you. You learn to love them. You don't see that funny face looking like a Chinese boat anymore. Yeah, that's how it is. So if she gets married, provided she's happy, and uh, everybody does what they have to do, then uh, only the future can tell us. You can't judge, yeah, you're going to be unhappy. You don't know that. You're unhappy, but you start dating people you love. Where are they? They're all gone. They're all gone. You know, $1 million, baby. And, and they took you for free. I know some people go, yeah, why do you pay that money? It's like selling a human being. But you've been giving that stuff for free, my baby. Why are you giving it for free? I mean, you giving it for free, you're still frustrated. You're still unhappy. But somebody give it for money, a million dollars. At least they got something out of it. Not just a story. You ain't never going to write a book anyway. <laughs> telling your story. So yeah, this is beautiful, fellas. Again, like I said, Africa is, am is immense. It's big. We have very similar cultures. Even though you see some differences here and there, influenced by Western nations and stuff like that. But the core, at the core of it, we are one people. Whether you like it or not, Africans are like children from the same father and different mothers. There's a lot of similarity, more similarity than differences. You will find this very culture in many places. The diary is very important. Just that in some cultures, they do respect those aspects of the culture more than other cultures more than other countries, if you may say. Okay, so her name is Atia Duak Riak, 19 years old. I mean, some people have been saying 17 years old. I don't know who's accurate. 
She looks very much to me like a 19 years old. Let me look at her. Look at how tall this thing. Oh my God. She's beautiful. She's beautiful. I mean, you need to value yourself. You need to value yourself. If you cheap, sell yourself cheap, people take you cheap. You can't be doing things and, you know, married people stuff while you're still unmarried. You can't be letting him take you for two weeks. You don't go home. Like, why do you do that? He ain't gonna marry you. Don't do that. No. <laughs> no. You go for a day. Just before you get it off, you say, no, stop. No. I actually remember something. Um, yeah. What we're doing is wrong. Yeah. Just before you get it. No, no, I, 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 stop it. What do I do? Go get, let's do things properly. Oh, I want a baby by you. No. Baby by me. Go see my father. Go see my father first. I don't want to be nobody's baby mama. <laughs> it's not honorable. It's not honorable. There, there no, ain't nobody going to pay a million dollars for a baby mama. I'm sorry. With all due respect, they're not. But they will pay a million dollars for a virgin. Let me know how you feel about this. It was a great pleasure. It's a nice celebration. Um, Africa is so much. God bless. <laughs>